Hey, what's up? This is Darren Pearson, also known as Darius Twin, and I'm gonna go over five common mistakes that beginner light painters make when light painting for the first couple times. And, uh, and I'm gonna assume that you already have a camera, a tripod, a light source, a remote, um, all the basics. Maybe a headlamp, maybe a high-powered flashlight to get a focus. Um, and let's, let's go on from here. So number one, beginners may not understand the difference between 30 second exposure time and bulb mode, but any modern light painter is gonna know the difference between bulb mode and a 30 second exposure time. So uh, the idea is that you wanna have your shutter open as long as you need it. So if you're light painting a bunch of things and it stops at 30 seconds, but you're not done with your drawing, then only a quarter of your drawing is gonna appear in the lens. Um, and this is problematic if you're doing multiple figures or say like you have a vast distance to cover. You're running over to this place that's 50 yards out and you start light painting something and well, it never came out because it took you 30 seconds to run over there. So uh, my advice is to get familiar with bulb mode for your camera. Not all cameras have it, and you wanna seek the cameras that do. A lot of the Sony ones do, a lot of the camera, or a lot of the Canon higher end uh, cameras do, um, Nikon cameras as well. I'm not sure about any and all brands because some do, some don't. GoPro, I'm not really sure. Last I checked, they were limited to 30 second increments. So this is gonna dramatically adjust what style of light painting you are capable of. And I would personally look for something with bulb mode. Number two is uh, going to a place that you're unfamiliar with and uh, going in at night. This is essentially going in blind. You can't see what's going on. Um, all you have is a light source and that's a very small visual on like what your landscape is. So I would recommend to any beginner light painter to go to a place and when you visit it, scout it, go everywhere. Take iPhone shots, take camera shots, whatever you need in order to establish this is what the landscape looks like. And, uh, and make sure, you know, there's no pitfalls for you to fall into. Like take note of like wood on the ground, are there nails sticking up from it? Like you don't want to step on a nail at night, that sucks. Um, you don't want to fall off a cliff, that would not be good. There's a lot of uh, mishaps that are bound to happen if you do not scout the location first before visiting at night in the dark. Number three, uh, blurry images. This is a pretty common mistake for beginners because, uh, you know, let's be honest, everybody's used to taking photographs during the day and it's easy to autofocus when there's a lot of light present. But um, when it's night and there is no light present, then you have to shine your flashlight in order to get an autofocus on anything. And then once you have that focus, in order to hold the focus and not have the camera try and autofocus again in the dark, you need to set your camera to manual focus. One of the techniques that I've devised um, in terms of setting a perfect focus every single time is to set up the tripod, set up the camera in the general vicinity that I want to uh, photograph something. And then I'll go in front of the camera, I'll find basically a center point, and oftentimes I'll mark the place with uh, you know, a stack of rocks or a branch or whatever it takes to know where my mark is. Then I'll go back to my camera, center the shot using a light, and then once I have it centered, I will take my camera off the tripod, go to my mark, and then with my camera and my light, I'll focus on where the tripod is. So once I have that focus, I know the next time that I put my camera on the tripod, my mark will be in focus. So this is an important technique. Um, and you always want to uh, have your camera set to manual focus because when you trigger your camera, you don't want the camera trying to set a focus without any light present. It's going to come out blurry. 
let's move along to number four, uh, blown out images. So um, a common mistake for beginners is like, you're taking a photo and say you're in the city or something and uh, there's tons of street lights present and you go back to your camera after a long exposure and then you go, wow, it's all white, it's blown out. You know, there's no detail on this shot because I overexposed it. So uh, an overexposed image means that your f-stop needs to be set a lot higher than it is. So if you're capturing at 2.8 and there's street lights present, you're gonna have like a yellowy blown out image. However, if you set your camera to f13 to f16, the lighting is gonna be a lot more balanced, hopefully. The other setting to play with is ISO. So uh, if it's overexposed, it means potentially the ISO is set too high. You want to come down with that ISO to something like uh, 100, 160, 200, depending on what kind of ambient light conditions there are. Alternatively, if it's too dark, then uh, maybe your f-stop is up too high and you want to come down a little bit. But it's all a balancing act and the idea is to get a balanced lit image with as much information as possible within the frame. Last one. Is, uh, is just checking around after you're done with the shoot. It's basically wrapping it up. So uh, you wanna take your light and just look around for any, anything you might be leaving behind. If, if you lost your remote or say you dropped something along the way, like now is the time to look for it, pick it up, make sure it's in its bag and, uh, and just not leave anything. You can't leave anything. It really stinks to uh, to lose something in the dark. Um, and lastly, one of the things that I like to do is, uh, because I usually leave my camera bag on the ground, I like to look around it and make sure there, there are no bugs, like the spiders or whatever crawling around it. Sometimes I'll pack up all my gear, zip up the bag, and then hold it up and smack it a couple times just to make sure no bugs are on or around the camera bag when I leave. Then I can like uh, just rest well knowing that there's not a huge spider like crawling on my back or something when I leave the place. And uh, nobody wants that. So that's it. Those are my five trick tips and uh, hope you enjoy. Comment below if you have something I didn't cover um, and uh, subscribe, like, you know, all the things. Bye.